In this video, we're going to look at several features of a commercial wireless LAN protocol analyzer that help us to analyze the performance of our wireless LAN. We're using Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer Pro for this demonstration, but tools like OmniPeak and ComView for Wi-Fi may have features that assist with performance analysis like this as well. So here we are at the dashboard, and I'm going to go ahead and click the Start Capture button so that I'm getting live capture information. Now, note in this case, I've pre-configured Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer Pro to just look at channel 11. So we're looking at channel 11 in 2.4 gigahertz. And in the process of this, we'll be able to focus in on that particular channel. So in a scenario where you have a BSA on channel 11 or 6 or 1 or some 5 gigahertz channel, and you think you're experiencing performance problems related to RF or Wi-Fi, you can place the tool on the channel like this and begin to scan within that channel. Now, as I'm scanning the channel, I am seeing the average utilization here in my dashboard. I also see the top talkers. I see the top SSIDs by utilization, the AP security settings, the top APs based on active associations, and the active device count. Now, in my scenario, you can see my top AP, which is this Belkin Linksys device, has five total clients, so it's not a heavily utilized environment, but we do see that the downlink uh, throughput to the Intel client is at least sending some significant data. So this is my receive for this client. So when you're looking at this particular chart for top talkers, you'll note the legend gives you color codes for the individual devices. And then you will actually see that there's a gray bar beside of it. Well, the gray bar beside is the receive for that device. The blue is the transmit from that device. That is to say, the blue is what the device is sending to the AP, and the gray is what the AP is sending to the device. So I can see that the downlink is significantly higher. I can see my active devices as well here. So just this alone is beneficial in that I can see the SSIDs that are operating in the channel. So I can see four or five SSIDs that are operating in my channel. I can see again the top talkers and I can see the utilization in the channel is somewhere between 10 and 20% on a pretty consistent basis, roughly around 12 to 14% most of the time. You can also see in the lower portion here, the number of CRC errors, unicast frames versus broadcast frames, and multicast frames as well. Total number of frames are also listed here. Up in the top left, I can see my signal level and my noise level. So my noise level has this red bar here, indicating that there might be some significant noise in the channel, maybe coming from other cells in the area or possibly from non-Wi-Fi devices. But the red bar is telling me my noise is right around 78 to 80 dBm and that's negative 78 to 80 dBm. And so there's a significant level of noise that's being perceived here. Well, I can actually go to the interference view, and in this view, I can look at a particular channel and see what the issues might be. And you'll notice the noise here is in red, which is indicating that the software believes that's a significant amount of noise at neg 78. And indeed, if your noise is at neg 78, it's going to greatly reduce your SNR and impact performance in the channel. So I might want to do some analysis and find out if that noise is simply being generated by surrounding networks or if there's some non-Wi-Fi device in the environment that I could locate with a spectrum analyzer or something of that sort. But we're clearly seeing there's possibly an issue right there in relation to my performance because of the noise in that environment. You'll also notice that if I go back to the start, I can view the individual devices that are actually communicating on the channel. And for example, you'll notice that I have a CenturyLink device that is communicating at NEG100 signal, and a Linksys device and a Kenny device, all at NEG100. The Bernice device fluctuates between 80 something and negative 100. So all of these together, of course, could be adding up to my uh, potential noise floor increase, as well as other possible non-Wi-Fi devices. And here I can see my local access point is at NEG20, so I've got significant SNR here, even with the noise at that level of NEG78. I can also see my individual stations here as well, and I can see those that are connected to my SSID, which is Office 2.4. And so I see that I have one device here, which is an Intel uh, chipset or radio device. I have another one right here. And then here is an Apple device connected to my network. Here is a computer. And here is another Apple device that is connected to the system.
I can see the actual signal and noise that are being seen for those particular devices. Now note that I am close to the AP and far from some of these client devices. Uh, for example, if we come back up to the device here, you can see the device signal is fluctuating, neg 60 something to neg 100 and so. The signal reads are not going to be perfectly accurate here, but you can see certainly that device is farther away from my protocol analyzer. And here, this device is also further away from my protocol analyzer. Notice it's being reported as an 11G device, at least an 11G data rate. Now, that therefore shows me the devices. Here I can look at the individual APs, and here I can look at the individual stations. So let's just go back to the dashboard and let's go to another view that's very important for performance analysis and that's the channel view. Select the channel view, then choose the channel. You can see I have five APs and six stations that have been detected on this channel. Here it's going to show me the utilization of my channel. Now my channel is only being utilized at around 12 to 14 percent. So that is not a significant or detrimental amount of utilization. But another thing in addition to just the percentage of utilization is to see the percentage of packets at different data rates. So I can see that 54 to 300 megabits per second data rates are very low actually. I have at 24 megabits per second roughly 15 percent and at 6 megabits per second 60 plus percent at 1 megabits per second roughly 19 to 20 percent. Well that's to be expected that I'll have some of those 1 megabit per second because beacon frames and RTS CTS frames and so forth are going out at that rate. But I've also got some other low data rates that are showing up here as well. And so that could be an issue that I've got a cell that is too large without another AP to provide access for those particular clients. So clearly I can see here some very useful information in analyzing the performance of this particular network. If utilization is below 30 or 40 percent, you're probably okay as long as you're not seeing a massive amount of low data rates even at that utilization level. Now I can also go to the infrastructure view and here in the infrastructure view I can choose a device and then I can look at the signal to noise ratio for that device and over on the right side I can see the individual frames and a very important count I can see the retry frames. So if my retry frames are significantly high, and if you look at the number of frames I have here, 789,000, almost 800,000, and less than 1,000 of those are retry frames. So that's a very low percentage, and therefore I'm not concerned about retries. So retries, if I'm analyzing performance, are certainly not the problem. My frames are getting through the vast majority of the time. You can also see there are CRC errors. But don't worry about those too much if your retry rate is not also high because these CRC errors are simply for the local adapter and while that adapter may not be able to decode the frame appropriately it does not mean that the target device is unable to decode that frame. If we go to the top traffic analysis here you can see your top APs by speed and so I'm looking right now at the Belkin which has the highest speeds available, but I can also go to frames, CRC, data management and control, so how much is data versus possible CRC frames. Here's my retry frames, so I can see my total frames, my retry frames, and my fragmented frames, and as you can see the retry frames are very very low. I can also go to the top stations by speed, and I can see the Intel Laptop is one of the top stations there by speed. I can see retries, so the Intel again very low and indeed none of these stations have significantly high retries, so that's good. I can also go to just the top 10 devices and analyze that as well to see if there are any possible issues there. And again, we're not really seeing any performance issues in related to that, so we're still back to that noise issue, which may simply drive us to decide to put the AP on a different channel in this location. Now I can also go to my Wi-Fi tools area, where I can see some useful information. So for example, right here I'm on the efficiency view, and notice that I can choose the AP and the station that I want to evaluate. So if I evaluate, for example, this computer, in relation to it, it's going to tell me, well, based on that computer and that AP, you're going to have 
limited abilities as far as actual data rates and so forth that are going to be supported. And if I go to a different device, you'll notice that it's going to change to show me the information about that different device. Then I can go to my analysis view and once again I can choose my AP and I can choose my device. And this is going to show me information about the downlink and the uplink for that particular device. If there's no current activity, you may not see significant traffic for any given device. Simply select a different device and wait to see the results of information that you're seeing there. Now we can also go to our 11AC efficiency and analysis tools. We also have the RF signal distribution tool which is good for locating things like multipath communications. So if I go in and choose my Belkin and click Start, I can then see the signal and the noise. And what you ultimately want to see is that your signal is not distributed over the wide area, but rather is focused around the signal strength area. So for example, if I go to my stations and I choose one of these stations that is connected, Then very shortly, I'll begin to see the actual signal from the station is the green here. And what you'll see is these yellow dots in addition. You want the yellow dots to stay around the signal when the signal is actually seen on the channel. If the yellow dots are dispersed away from it, it indicates that there may be some significant multipath. It looks pretty good in this case, so we'll click on stop. You also have a diagnostic section where you can choose a station and an access point and run your diagnostics. It's going to let you know if it's seeing any data sent and received, and it will gather statistics for some period of time. You can simply let it run until it gets to 100%, and then it will give you the diagnostics. And basically, if there are problems getting frames through, things like that, it's going to report that information to you. So it's a great analysis function that allows you to determine if there may be some problems with that particular device. And so we'll let this go ahead and process and then speed through to the end. Okay, we have rapidly time lapsed to the end of the process and you can see that it just gives us a report saying if there's a problem, it must be a higher layer protocol problem because at layer 2 at 802.11, the system observed a successful data packet exchange between the client station and the Belkin AP. So there may not be a wireless link layer problem, but there could be upper layer problems if you're still experiencing issues. So this is an excellent tool for a single client to an AP in diagnosing the possible communications issues. Now of course like any other protocol analyzer you're also going to have the decodes view where you can actually see the individual frames. So we'll stop the capture allowing us to actually pause and take a look at a frame. So we can see a request to send frame for example and when you choose that you can go down below and you'll be able to see signal strength and noise level and this may or may not be accurate to the actual signal strength and noise of the environment depending on the adapter that you're using for capture and things of that sort. I can see the data rate for this particular frame is 24 megabits per second in channel 11 and when I take a look at the MAC header in the frame control field, I can see if it's to the DS or from the DS and so forth. Is it a retry? And so then I see a clear to send and then a block acknowledgement. And we can scroll through and see eventually there's encrypted data. So notice that my data is going at 104 megabits per second in this case. MCS 13 for a 20 megahertz HT channel. I can see here that this one is also going at 104 megabits per second. And we can go on down through the list until we see various different devices that might be communicating on the network. So you can look at data, you can look at acknowledgement frames, and you can look at request to send, clear to send frames, and you can see beacon frames as well as long as they're not filtered out of your capture. So this is the actual packet view, which of course you can do in Wireshark or any other tool. The power of these dedicated tools like Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer Pro, ComView for Wi-Fi, and OmniPeak is that they're going to give you experts that summarize information for you. So packet analysis itself 
looking at the individual packets is not much different here in these tools than it is in Wireshark. Finally, you'll have reporting tools that can give you reports on the environment. So you might want to choose an interference report. So here's my interference summary. And you can also choose to view a report on your top 10 devices by speed or by bytes and so forth. You can also look at compliance reports. And you can see there's an RF summary report here as well, an AP list, a station list, and all of these reports are simply generated for you automatically. And then you can use these reports in order to provide summary information of what you discovered in your performance analysis efforts. As you can see, a tool like Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer Pro, ComView for Wi-Fi, or OmniPeak's Wi-Fi tool will allow you to actually get valuable information very quickly from these experts to analyze the performance of your network.